everyone, and welcome to another episode on Science, Geekery, and Awesomeness. I'm your host, J.J. Billings, and I'm looking forward to uh, another wonderful new year, and I hope you are too. So, so happy new year. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. I'm going to talk to you today uh, about the Eclipse platform, and so apologies to those of you who don't know about Eclipse, but for those who do, let's talk about getting the Eclipse platform in your web browser. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you Eclipse running in Firefox on my Linux machine. And the way we accomplish this is using the uh, GTK Broadway backend. That's a good segue for the technical discussion about why we would want to do this. And so working on this, what we're looking at now and what we've been doing for this video is actually a joint effort between my team at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and some colleagues at Red Hat. Uh, that's Sopa Sela, Alexander Kurtikov, and Eric Williams. It's been a really great um, a collaboration so far. We've been looking at a lot of stuff. On the Oak Ridge side, we're more looking at bugs and trying to find places where things break. And we're leaving the code to the experts, to the SWT team at Red Hat. So the interest here is moving SWT off of pure X11 code. We want to make sure that we only call GTK code in SWT in the future so that it goes to Wayland. If you don't know about Wayland, Wayland is a new compositing engine that will ship by default on Fedora 24. So X will still be there, but it will realize the Wayland interface in what's called the X Wayland library. You can test this now in Fedora 23 using GNOME if you want, um, but I'm actually, I don't mess with that too much. What I do mess with is the Broadway backend. Now, I've had a lot of fun with Wayland, don't get me wrong, but Broadway is another backend that will take whatever you're looking at, whatever you would normally render on the desktop, and it will render it with HTML5 in the web browser. And so that's what I've been messing with, because on Eclipse Ice, that's really what we want. We want to take the whole platform to the web browser, so that all of our modeling and simulation tools, our tools for authoring code, and all sorts of other Eclipse tools can be right there for users, and we're going to serve this up through ORNL's cloud platform. So users will go to cades.ornl.gov, for example, and they'll log in, and then Eclipse will show up in their browser. And it'll be ICE, and then they can use all the modeling and simulation tools. So what we want to do with this video is get you to help. We want to show it to the community and appeal uh, to all of you to help us to find bugs, to file bugs against the main ticket, and uh, to let us know what the errors are. That way we can try to make small SWT examples and get them to the guys at Red Hat so that they can fix this, and others in the community who do SWT development. That's our hope, so um, uh, please take a look at this video and let us know what you think. Uh, look in the uh, section below describing the video, you'll find a link to a companion blog article that will show you, it'll actually give you the details on how to get this running so that you don't have to watch the video, you can just go through a quick how-to. Uh, so with no further ado, um, let's take a look at this. If you have questions, of course, uh, email me um, or send something to Twitter and we'll go from there. But yeah, let's, uh, let's check it out for now. Okay, here's Eclipse in the browser. Surprise, it's exactly what you would expect. We have our code in the center, we have our project uh, explorer, our package explorer on the left, and our outline on the right. You can tell it's a browser by looking at the URL bar at the top and the two tabs, one for my Gmail address and one for the Broadway tab. You can write operations, define variables, define classes, just like you would do in Eclipse. Now, one problem about this, and so something I'm not going to show you, is that long-running operations will actually hang and crash Eclipse when run through Broadway. So for example, generating this class crashed Eclipse because I used the uh, right-click new class generator. But you can see by the little tab that popped up, things like code completion work. I also have a note here that Control-Shift-F doesn't work. And this is most likely because Control-Shift-F is overridden by Firefox to do some browser-specific operation. And uh, so aside from that, um, it 
you know, code editing mostly works just fine. Um, I'm going to show you code completion again, and and this time um, I'll just write out a little little kind of math formula, although nothing nothing spectacular. And what we'll have is exactly what we expect. We can hit Control Shift and or, uh, Control Space, and code completion will come up. Works exactly like you would expect. Um, there are some rough edges. I'm going to show you some bugs in a minute that will explain why I'm not clicking and doing some super crazy things. Notice that the the uh, file menu is missing. The tool, uh, the cool bar is missing, uh, and I'm also having some trouble clicking things. So. To click on an item in the outline, I have to be a full centimeter above it to get it to work. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these bugs. Let's take a look at that messed up clicking. So if I go to the outline on the right and I try to click anything, nothing really happens unless I'm about a centimeter above the item. Let's try that for a project. So I'm going to try to click on the item DB project and I'm clicking like crazy here and it finally happens. You can't see the clicks, but trust me, they're there. And now I'm trying to click test project and it does it again. And only you can see now I'm, I'm on the project above test project when it actually happens. And when I click item DB, I'm actually up in the toolbar for that widget. The next set of bugs pop up when we try to change perspectives. Now I have to get to the change perspective menu by hitting Alt W and going through the window menu manually since I can't see the buttons or the perspective change menu. And now when the menu pops up, you can see that there's some weird drawing happening. I essentially have two different pieces and what happens depends on what I'm doing, if I'm scrolling up or scrolling down. If I maximize it, I can see the whole window and I can finally see the OK and Cancel buttons. Now I'm going to try to create a plot in Eclipse Ice's visualization perspective. So now I'm clicking about a centimeter above the Add button and choosing to add a local file. Notice that the GTK file browser works perfect. It's gorgeous. So if I select a file here, I don't have any trouble. This is how we know that the problems are actually in Eclipse and not in other pieces of the UI system. Now something should have showed up in this menu that I'm hovering over, but I can't see it. After playing with it for a while, I figured out that if I forced a redraw by changing the size, it would show up. So now I can see my plot, and I can see what is in the menu. If I did it again, I would encounter the same problems. Now looking at this GEF menu in SWT XY graph, I see the same offset where I have two different windows drawn and they're offset from each other and they're blinking all over the place. If I'm very, very sneaky with the mouse, I can switch to a separate menu and then I can set a, a semi-log um, status for this plot. It takes a little bit of doing because again the mouse is off and what I need to do is actually click this button which the button works. The button is not offset like the rest of the buttons in Eclipse. And here's the plot. This is exactly what we would expect it to look like. Um, but notice I cannot, this should show up in the menu in the view on the bottom left, but it doesn't show up there. I'm sure if I refresh the screen, it would. Let's take a look at Eclipse Forms and that table. So if I try to create a form in Eclipse Ice, notice I'm already having the problem where I need to click a little high. My item selector menu is again shifted off, and this is just a JFace dialog, just like the perspective selector. And uh, now once the form pops up, I have this NAT table, which for the most part rendered OK. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to click in it, and no matter how many times I click or how hard or how fast I click, the NAT table will not function. So this is something that we're going to have to check out since some number of our tables in Eclipse are actually NAT tables. And of course, a lot of other people use NAT table as well. On the whole, Eclipse forms look OK. This is a shared header form editor, and it, it renders fine. Um, I can select something in the shared header, and I can tell ICE to process its work to do what it needs to do. 
And when I do that, it actually, it takes a little bit. So I'm not sure what's happening on the back end there, but eventually it happens. Now the status menu that shows up in ICE doesn't appear. And also the properties bar that's needed for working with the reflectivity simulator doesn't show up. Normally I click the properties tab and then I click on the reflectivity simulator. They sync up and I see what I need with some tab properties. But no matter how many times I click here, that won't work. At this point I'm not sure what happened because I couldn't click on anything. And even after I ran the reflectivity simulator with the calculate reflectivity button, the file menu on the left never updated. So some more work here, but overall pretty, pretty promising. Now I'm going to try to create a few more forms in Eclipse Ice. Uh, the plus button, the create item button won't work. And so I'm going to get around that by using the menu. I hit Alt F and I go to the wizard. This is a standard wizard. It's the one I showed a minute ago. It's a JFace wizard that, that works through the Eclipse UI. API and um, it's just as messed up as it was before but that's okay because I can still select something and hit enter I'm going to create a battery launcher for a battery simulation in this case it's functionally there all of the pieces that I needed in the form show up uh, some of the aesthetics are off but everything that I needed to see actually shows up now this is not a NAT table that I'm using here this is actually a a regular uh, JFace table so if I create another item, I'm going to try to create a 3D geometry editor in this case. Now, this is going to mess up because on my laptop that I'm using for this video, I don't have the 3D graphic card installed. But here's where it gets interesting. No matter what I click, no matter what button I hit, I cannot figure out how to get the problem occurred dialog to go away. It actually crashes Eclipse in this case. So you can see that I'm trying to close some of the menus on the back, I'm trying to open up the details tab, whatever I do, no matter what I click, these menus won't go away. So what I eventually have to do is shut down Eclipse and restart it. I'm not sure why this is an issue, but it's definitely something that we'll have to fix. This last bug I like to affectionately call death by project. I'm going to try to open either project here. So you can see that again the highlighting and, and selecting the project is off by a centimeter. If I right click the projects I can go through the menus as we would expect. Now what happens if I actually try to click the little arrow that opens the project? So I'm going to do that here and I'm highlighting them at the moment. They do change colors, which is good. But then when I go ahead and do that, boom! Eclipse just died. So the white screen of death with Broadway says that it failed, and I get a little oops, a little frowny face popping up saying that the JVM has died. Let me show you how to launch this on your own. Go to the Run Configuration menu however you prefer to do that. Create an Eclipse application launcher. So you need the PDE plugin to do this. Go to the environment tab. Now you need to be on Linux for this to work. Remember this is GTK under Linux. And set these variables. Set Broadway display equal to the Broadway port that you want to use. And then uh, set the GTK backend variable to Broadway. And you can go ahead and click run after that and that's all you need to run it. Uh, you'll see everything in the console show up, show up. You also need to have the Broadway back end running. To do that from a terminal, make sure you have Broadway installed. Run the Broadway D command with a space and then a colon and the port number. And Broadway will run on localhost uh, 8085 in my case since I picked port 5. And there is Eclipse running in the browser with a little bit of a rendering problem, but otherwise good to go. Oh! Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty exhausted after that. Uh, lots of bugs, but this is a real opportunity. I think the fact that we can even get the platform working at all in the browser, the whole platform, code editing, RCP stuff, GEF stuff, I mean, you name it, it's all there. I think this is an opportunity. I think it's really fantastic, and it's something that, that we, can, we can take advantage of in the community. So uh, please uh, let me know 
if you want to try anything, um, if you know, if you have any questions about the video, send me send me a message on Twitter or email me. Um, th that's all good and everything. Thanks again for watching. Um, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.